Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our live stream fire and ice show. My name is Chint Cindy. I'll be doing the show for you today. And I would just like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the, we are joining you from the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil people. Now, we are streaming here from the beautiful city of Vancouver. Uh, this is our Science World center stage. Um, and we are streaming from our city. But we can see that there are probably people from watching from all over. So what we are going to do is we're going to try and do something really fun throughout our show today. Um, so if you want to share which city, country, town, village that you are joining us from, please feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, and then we would love to hear where you are coming from. Also throughout the show, I'm going to be asking a couple questions. Um, and if you want to answer any of those questions, or if you just want to make a comment or anything, feel free to drop that in the chat. And we will be making sure that we are looking at the chat and monitoring it as we go through this show. Now, here at Science World, uh, we love our center stage. It is where I get to do a bunch of really, really fun shows when our building is open. And usually we have some safety considerations for center stage. Um, and one of the main ones is that we usually have a danger zone in front of that stage. So we are making sure that our audience is staying a safe distance away from our show so that they don't get hurt and we don't get hurt. However, we don't really have an audience here in our building today, uh, we have you guys watching from all over British Columbia, all over Canada, all over the world. But we do have a very, very lovely crew that is helping put all of this together. Uh, so we have Jeff, we have Ashley on the comments, and we have Jen on the cameras. And we are all making sure that we are staying a safe distance away from each other. Actually, Jen's, Jen's camera can zoom in and out like so. Oh, OK. OK. Let's keep it there. Jen's camera can zoom in and out. Um, and that it will allow her to show some close-up shots and even some further shots. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is that the show that we are doing is called The Fire and Ice Show. Now, you might be able to tell from what this show is called that we are going to be working with some things that are very, very hot. We are also going to be working with some things that are very, very cold. So we have to make sure that we are staying safe while we work with these things. So a couple of the safety considerations that we have today is we have our trusty, ugh, handy dandy fire extinguisher on hand at all times. Uh, and that is going to help us make sure that we are staying safe and that we are prepared. I also have some safety glasses here that I'm going to put on now and I'm going to keep on for the remainder of these shows because we are going to be working with a lot of different materials. We are going to be working with things like this powder that I'm putting into my hand right here. This is a very, very fine powder. It's also very flammable, so I don't want any of that in my eyes. We are also going to be working with other chemicals through this show. So safety goggles are very important. We are also going to be working with live flames. So to make sure we are being safe with that, I have my hair up at all times throughout the show. And I also have this lab coat. This is a fire retardant lab coat. So it is going to make sure that I am staying safe along with my fellow coworkers here at Science World. Now, with all these safety considerations and with my training that I've received, we get to do really, really cool stuff with fire, such as this. All right. Are you ready for the fire and ice show, everyone? You hit that like react if you are ready. OK. So the fire and ice show is something, is a very, very special show to me, because we get to talk about all sorts of really, really cool things. But the main thing we're going to be talking about is energy. Now, energy is a very, very interesting concept. It's very, very important because all things have energy because everything is made up of tiny, 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 too small to see 
atoms and molecules. And these atoms and molecules, they always move around a little. They're always kind of moving around, just like this. If at home you want to join me by moving around a little like this, we're going to play a little game. Because when atoms and molecules gain energy and when they get kind of hot, they move faster. They move faster. And they can move really, 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 really fast. And then when they lose heat, they move slower and slower and slower. So we're going to play a little bit of a game here. So when I say that something is hot, we're going to move really fast. And then when I say something is cold, we're going to move really slow and hot. Cold. Hot. Cold. Hot. Cold. Hot. Cold. Then cold. 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 OK. No. Cold. Cold. OK. Stop. Stop. Great job. All right. Now that we know that heat and energy are related, we can talk about something called heat transfer. Now, heat transfers in many different ways from object to object. You probably know that sometimes if you touch something that's cold, it gets warm afterwards. Uh, sometimes when something warm touches you, you get warm afterwards. So heat is always transferring from object to object. And it can transfer in a couple different ways. But what I wanted to start talking about is how sometimes heat can be kind of hard to see. I mean, you can look at something and you don't really know if it's hot or cold. Now is a great time to put in the chat, what is one thing that you looked at, thought was really cold or was hot, or maybe the opposite. What is one thing that you looked at that you thought was really hot but was actually cold. I will circle back and get some answers for that later. But first, I want to share with you something really, really cool. And it's a way that we can visualize heat. Um, and it's with something called an infrared camera. But we don't really have one right here at Science World right now. But I think Brian, my friend Brian, who is a science facilitator at Science World, is actually on call at home. He's doing some really cool stuff with uh, infrared cameras. So let's throw it over to Brian. Hey folks, it's Brian from Science World, and I have a really cool demonstration that I can show you from my home using this special piece of hardware. Attached to our iPhone is an infrared camera, and unlike the visible light that your normal camera will pick up on your iPhone, it'll actually pick up on the infrared radiation, which kind of shows us the different heat radiation coming off of certain objects. So I'm going to actually turn the camera towards these two identical looking cups. They both brown, they both got white lids, but one of them has a cool liquid in it and the other one has a hot liquid in it. They're both water, but if I turn the camera towards these cups, you can definitely see the difference now. The cup on the left is giving a very blue color from the color spectrum of our infrared camera and the right cup looks like it's glowing hot. I can actually confirm that by touching the side. It, yes, it is definitely hot. I'd be careful if I was to drink that liquid. But since this is such a cool demonstration that I was able to show you from home, if you've got a really cool demonstration or science experiment that you want to share with Science World, when you upload it to social media, just put the hashtag show us your science in the video description. Thanks, folks. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. That was really, really, really cool. Um, Ashley, do we have any suggestions in the chat of hot things that might look cold or cold things that might look hot? Becca thought the stove looked cold, but it was hot. Ooh, yeah, that can be dangerous. You always, you never want to touch a stove if you don't know what temperature it is. Anything else, Ashley? Ooh, Carly said that, well, Carly said that lava looks hot. Lava, lava looks hot. Yeah, that's that is true. Really it does does look hot, hot, and it is, in fact, yeah. very, very hot. Um, okay, those are some awesome, awesome answers for the chat. I hope that keeps going through for the rest of the show. Um, but yeah, Brian has a really, really cool tool called an infrared camera. And we really, it's hard to get infrared camera sometimes. Um, so if you don't have an infrared camera at home, there are still clues that you can look for, uh, for things that might, you know, that might tell you if something is hot or cold. In the chat, do you want, would anyone be able to maybe tell us a clue that you can look for that indicates whether something is hot or cold? Now, this is one really, really cool demonstration that I really, really love doing. 
um, because it has to do with chemistry and it shows us some of the clues that we can look for to see if something is hot or if something is cold. Because what I have right here is I have a chemical called ammonium thiocyanate. Now, ammonium thiocyanate is a white powder. You might be able to see. It's just the white solid. I'm just going to add that to my beaker. So very carefully, I'm going to use my stir stick and add that to my beaker. Nice. OK. So I also have another chemical called barium hydroxide. Now, barium hydroxide, if you're able to see, is also a white powder. So it is another white solid. Now, wow. I can open this container too, and I can throw some barium hydroxide into our mixture, just like that. OK, so now that we have our two chemicals in the same beaker, what we can do is we can just take it and we can mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. Oh, so much mixing. But what you can do is you can take a look at what's happening inside our beaker because something is really, really cool is happening. We have two white powders that are forming a liquid. So we have two solids that turn into a liquid which is a very, very interesting reaction. This is an endothermic reaction, and an endothermic reaction is very, very interesting because this reaction actually absorbs energy or absorbs heat from the environment around it. And that heat gets transferred from the environment around it to the beaker through a process called conduction. And that's kind of our first method of heat transfer that we are going to be exploring today. So there's a little bit of heat transfer. It's absorbing heat from the environment, but we might not be able to tell. Because if you look at this, you can't really tell that heat is being absorbed, that anything is really happening except that our, uh, our chemicals turned into a liquid. But if I were to lift this beaker up, you can actually see that our wooden plank under here has actually frozen to our beaker. That is how cold our reaction has made the environment around it. That's how much heat has absorbed, and that's how much heat was transferred through conduction. So that is very, very cool. Ashley, do we have any people who uh, put something in the chat about clues towards uh, if something is hot or cold? Brooke says something melting in the sun looks hot, but it's cold. Ooh, that is correct. Something melting in the sun can look hot, but it can feel kind of cold. And very, very cold. Ooh, Merrick says you can just tell with your eyes. You can just tell with your eyes sometimes. If you look at something like lava that Carly said before, see that it looks really, really hot, you might, you might not want to touch it because it might be really, really hot, which is very, very correct. That's awesome. So we see that there are clues that something is hot, that something is cold. And we saw that through a process called conduction, we saw heat transfer from one object to another. And I actually have another really, really cool demonstration of conduction. It involves uh, this bowl, simple, simple bowl I actually brought from home, and this tray of ice, ice cube. Wow. It seems like somebody forgot to fill up our ice cube tray. So, Oh, actually, I don't have any ice cubes, but Brian, Brian, do you have any ice cubes? Maybe Brian at home. Hey, has folks, it's Brian cubes. from Let's Science World with another demonstration for you. This time, all I'm going to use is an ice cube. When I rub this ice cube on my face, heat is being transferred from my face to this ice cube through a process called conduction. Now, the effect that I'm going for might not be very obvious right now because you're seeing me with visible light. But what I'm trying to do is change the temperature on the surface of my skin, and this can be obvious using an infrared camera. So right here, we'll pull this up and you can see the spots where I was just rubbing that ice cube. Pretty obvious there because of the color spectrum change on my forehead and cheeks. Now, if you wanted to try out an experiment like this, but 
you might not have an infrared camera at home. Next time you're at Science World, you can check out our infrared camera found in the Eureka Gallery. Or if you have any other interesting demonstrations or experiments that you'd like to try at home, when you upload those to social media, just put the hashtag show us your science in the description so then we can see it as well. Anyways, have a great day, folks. How do I look? Awesome! Thank you so much, Brian. That was really cool. And I'm sure that because Brian was touching his face, he uh, followed proper hand washing procedure before he did that demonstration. So thank you very much, Brian, for staying safe and staying hygienic. And I'm sure everyone at home is also staying safe and staying hygienic with him. So that was a really, really cool demonstration. We saw that the the heat from his face was actually transferred to the ice cubes around him, which made them melt a little on his shirt, um, and also definitely showed up in the infrared camera, which is awesome. So that was conduction, and now it's time to move on to our second method of heat transfer, which is something called convection. Now, convection is really interesting because it's kind of about things touching, but it's also about the way that heat travels through certain fluids, such as air, but also such as water that's trapped in this balloon. Now, convection is very interesting because what happens with convection is that we have heat that moves through water. As you might know, some things that are warm, such as hot air, hot water, will rise and it'll circle back kind of in a current, like through convection. Now, this water balloon is very interesting because water is very, very good at absorbing heat. It is a very, very efficient heat sink. So what we can do is we can take our lighter. Oh, there we go. We can take our lighter and we can actually hold it kind of close to the balloon. Maybe this close. As you can see, nothing's really happening to the balloon. So what I can do is maybe I can bring this lighter a little closer to our balloon. Maybe this close. Hmm, nothing seems to be happening either. But maybe what I can do is I can get the flame to touch the balloon full of water. Now, something might happen if we touch a flame to our balloon full of water. And I want everyone in the chat to try and make some predictions as to what's happening, what might happen when we touch the flame to the balloon full of water. So in the chat, maybe write down if you think that A, the balloon might pop, B, nothing will happen, or C, maybe you just don't know, which is totally fine. And while you're writing these answers in the chat, let's just test this out in three, Two, one, one. Hmm, that's interesting. Who here, Ashley, do we have any answers from the chat? Any predictions anyone would like to share? Stella thought that it would pop. Stella thought that it would pop. Well, Stella, that is actually a really, really good answer because you would think that adding an open flame to a balloon might make a balloon pop. I think that's a great answer, but the balloon didn't pop, which is actually a little strange, but that might be because the water inside it was actually absorbing all of that heat energy. And in fact, the water that heats up at the bottom is able to rise to the top, and that is going to allow our balloon to have more capacity to absorb that heat, which means that it doesn't pop. Awesome. So that was a really, really cool demonstration of convection. It is really hard to see the water inside the balloon, though. Might not have been able to see it circulating. But actually, Hillary, Hillary has been doing some really, really cool stuff at home um, with convection. So Hillary, why don't you show everyone what you're doing? How can we move energy from somewhere that has a lot to somewhere that doesn't? Hi, I'm Hillary from Science World, and I'm going to demonstrate the transfer of heat energy through the movement of a fluid. I have four bottles, two with hot water and two with cold, plus food coloring so we can tell them apart. I'm going to put one hot bottle on top of a cold one and vice versa.
Just like hot air, the hot water is also rising. When it started out on top, we don't see much mixing. But when the hot water started out on the bottom, we see that both of these bottles are becoming purple as the hot water and the cold water move around past each other as the hot water rises. This is convection, the transfer of heat energy through the movement of a fluid. You can test this out at home. Try using different temperatures or different liquids. Share your experiments with us using the hashtag show us your science. Hillary, that was really, really awesome. Really, really cool. Um... And some of the things that we've been doing at home, you can also do at home. So if you want to head over to scienceworldca.resources, we have tons and tons and tons of awesome activities that you can do at home. But the next demonstration, I promise you, is not a demonstration that you can do at home. This is a demonstration only to be done by a trained adult because what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a giant fireball. But, you know, before we do that fireball, I actually just wanted to talk to you a little bit about our organization and about Science World. You see, so the dome might be closed, but Science World is still hard at work. However, losing our mainstream of revenue has created a financial crisis for, our, uh, for us as a charity. So if you would consider donating uh, today, so that we can continue empowering dreams and igniting wonder tomorrow. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, so let's move into our last demonstration. Like I mentioned before, we are going to be creating a giant fireball. Now, this fireball is going to be super cool um, and it is going to be a demonstration of our last, our third and last way that heat can be transferred. And this might be transferred, this is called radiation. This is something that you might be familiar with because it's what you feel if you put your hand next to something hot but not touch it. You feel that heat coming off it, it's already radiating off something that's hot. So what we are going to do is we are going to demonstrate this by creating, like I said before, a fireball. Um, and how we're going to do that is we have this candle inside our canister right here. And what we're going to do is we are going to light that candle. If I can get, oh, there we go. Light that candle, nice. And I'm just gonna light this candle here to kind of show us what's happening inside our canister. Because what we have is we have the same chemical that we are going to be, we used in our first demonstration to create fire. This is a highly flammable, uh, oh, that got a little, a little big. Um, this is a highly flammable powder called lycopodium powder. Now, lycopodium powder is very, very fine. It's very, very flammable. And we're just going to add maybe half a tablespoon or a tablespoon of lycopodium powder to our canister. Because fire really needs three things to stay stay lit. A flame needs three things to stay lit. What it needs is, the first thing it needs is oxygen. The second thing it needs is uh, fuel. So our lycopodium powder is highly flammable. That's going to be our fuel. And the third thing it needs is obviously a heat source, which is this candle right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to blow our lycopodium powder through our heat source. And that lycopodium powder is going to mix with our oxygen in the air and it is going to create a huge fireball. So we'll blow that out so we can do it for real in here. And after this final demonstration, we're actually going to be sticking around for a couple minutes to take questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to stick those in the chat and we can be answering them later. Um, or you can come up with questions later and then we'll be around for about five minutes to answer those as well. OK, so we have our candle lit. We have our lycopodium powder loaded. And what we are going to do is we are going to gauge audience interest first before we do anything. So who here is ready to see a giant fireball make some noise? No one? 
Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, this is a live stream. That's what I mean. Who here is ready to see a giant fireball? Put some likes in those chat in that chat if you're ready to see a fireball. And in three, two, one. That was so cool. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us for the fire and ice show. We will be around for a couple minutes to answer some questions. So stick around if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you and have a great day, everyone. Okay, Ashley, do we have any questions? How hot is lava? That is a very, very good question, Raphael. Lava is very, very hot. I am not sure at what exact temperature that lava stays at, but that would be a really, really cool thing to research. Um, and please let us know in the chat if you ever find the answer. That is super, super, that's a great question, Raphael. Where did that powder come from? That's an awesome question. Lycoponium powder is actually uh, the spore of a type of moss. So this powder actually came from moss, which is very cool. Would a balloon pop if there wasn't water inside? Would a balloon pop if there wasn't water inside? Great question. Now, before I answer this question, uh, this is also kind of an experiment you can try at home with, obviously, a trained adult at your side. You can test it out to see if a balloon pops with water or without water. Um, but plastic is not as good as retaining, or the rubber of a balloon isn't as good as retaining heat as water. So the water, uh, sorry, the flame might actually break down that plastic. But I encourage you to test it at home, make some predictions, and see if you're right. Okay, any more questions, Ashley? Arelli wants to know if you were nervous. I was very, very nervous, but I was also very, very excited for this show, and I'm very glad that I got to do it. Ooh, Tila wants to know, how can you be safe when you put fire in your hand? How can you be safe if you put fire in your hand? That is an awesome question. I'm safe when I put fire in my hand because I was trained to do it, so I spent a lot of time learning how to do it safely. Um, also, another really cool thing is the fire wasn't actually in my hand because when I dropped my hand, that powder in my hand actually flew up and interacted with the flames and the matches and didn't touch me. So I didn't actually have any fire in my hand. It just kind of looked like it, which is pretty cool. Last question? Tegan wants to know what would happen if you put a balloon what would happen if you put a balloon full of water in the oven? That is a great question. I have never tried that before personally. Um, it's also a great offer. Maybe don't try to put a balloon full of water in the oven, but maybe think about how the rubber in the balloon and the water might interact and how the oven might affect the rubber in the balloon if we let it stay in the heat, under the heat for a very, very long time. That's a really, really cool thing to discuss with your peers, with your parents, with your friends. Um, and you know what? That is a great question. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday at 2.20 p.m. with another show. So please share this with your friends if you think that that's something they'd be interested in, and we hope to see you again soon. Have a great day, everyone.